Hello, my name is Renee Garnett. I'm coming to you by way of the Virginia Department of Social Services Independent Living Program, where I serve as the program specialist. As the IO program specialist, my main role is to support approximately 120 local Department of Social Service agencies and young people in foster care with IO supports and services that will sustain young people while they are in care and when they transition out of care. Our goal in the IEL program is to ensure that youth 14 and over are receiving IEL services that will help them transition successfully into adulthood. So, in the IEL services program, we want to provide young people and our disabled youth with services that can help them along the way. We provide young people in high school with computers, driving school, um, yearbooks, senior pictures, club dues, activity fees, field trip fees, um, tutoring, mentoring, job coaching skills, we try to really prepare our young people and take time to help them advance their, their skills and abilities to help make room for them when they grow, grow up and transition from foster care. So we try to make sure our young people who are attending uh, high school is no different from any average child. They can come to school, they have the resources they need, and they can access the services to help them successfully complete high school. So at the Virginia Department of Social Services, we have some initiatives and some goals that we try to help our young people with. One of the first things for youth 14 and over that we try to make sure we do with them is to complete a, case, a life skills, a Casey life skills assessment. Once our young people take the Casey Life Skills Assessment, we begin to learn more about them through about their permanency plan, about their daily living, about their relationships, how um, they're able to take care of themselves, their communication, and their education planning, money management, how they're doing with their studies um, and, their, and their time and how they're managing their time with some of the significant areas that they are dealing with um, at that specific time when they take the assessment. And so we get a really good overview um, holistically of where our young people are. And from that assessment, we can sit down with our young person and we can work on and identify some goals that they have and look at some of the areas where they are showing some weaknesses in. So we know if we are assessing a young person and we see that they may have an area when it comes to their permanency plan. They may not have someone that they are connected to, an adult outside of social services that can look out for their best interest, that when they have an emergency at 2 o'clock in the morning, that's someone that they can call that's going to stop, that's going to pick up the phone and actually show up to help the young person. So we want to make sure every youth that leaves foster care is connected to one, at least one individual that's going to be there for them to continuously point and guide them into the right direction and help them make some critical key decisions. So the Casey Life Skills Assessment helps us to have a real fruitful conversation with our youth. And so approximately 30 days after they take the Casey assessment, they also can sit with their so, um, family services specialist, which is their formerly known as a social worker, um, and develop the transitional living plan. The transitional living plan is really a living document. It can follow a young person from the age 14 until they age out of foster care and stop receiving services at 21. And so we want to annually review their transitional living plan and make sure we're identifying goals that's going to help that young person transition into adulthood. And that's specifically important for our young people who have disabilities that we're really sitting down with them and mapping out a transitional plan and that we're working with some of our key partners to do that. 
And the, the Virginia Department of Social Services also provide youth conferences. We want to make sure our young people are connected to other young people that are in foster care, who are making great strides, who may be facing some challenges. And this is a place they can come, they can get information, they can connect with other young people, they can also um, build relationships with people at the local agencies and across the state. We always make sure we have experts um, presenting information to them that's going to help them make some key decisions in their life. So at 14, well, they may not be thinking so much about going to college, but by hearing the message about college, they can begin to consider it and that they learn that they too can attend college and successfully complete college with some resources that are provided and afforded to them. We want to make sure our young people also have youth leadership opportunities. We provide that at the local agency in many different ways. Um, helping our young people develop even public speaking skills where they can be effective at telling their story and not so much of a gruesome way, but sharing their real experiences to help advance other young people who may have faced some of the same issues, the same experiences, and, um, and have done fairly well um, for themselves. So connecting them with young people who look like them, talk like them, act like them is very important. And so we use those young people across our state in many different ways. These are our young people who also go to the General Assembly and present and they talk about what these, these additional fundings that we're considering really would mean for them. So that's really important. Our, um, we often refer young people to various entities. Um, for our disabled youth, we want to make sure when they come into care, and um, we may not know at the time when they enter foster care that they have a disability, but um, working with other paraprofessionals, we may identify some disabilities and then we make appropriate referrals. So connecting them with places like Social Security, um, connecting them with their school division where they can receive um, services through an IEP, a 504 program, or other unique um, programs that the school system may offer. DRS, we use um, this entity quite often for our young people with disabilities. We, um, they're, they're really great partners. They help us bring our young people in and they assess them and they identify key areas that we can work on to help them develop a transitional plan that's going to help them be more successful. Um, young people are being able to access ARC services, that is crucial for not only our young people, but even the caretakers of, of these youth. We um, utilize the CSBs in all of our localities. They are very critical um, to helping us access that expert care that we need for our youth. Um, without them, we really would, would, would face many challenges without having their expertise. Um, other community programs we utilize across the state, our key partners, we really need um, a, a really um, strong effort in helping us with our youth in foster care and to continuously point them in the right direction so that they can access the services that they need. Youth in foster care can contact his or her family services specialist. This person is formerly known as a social worker, but recently across the state, some local agencies have changed that, that title from social worker to family services specialist. So most of our young people can access services and programs through their um, family services worker at the local Department of Social Services. Youth can also contact Project Life to access services that's provided by the Virginia Department of Social Services and those in their local community. Project Life is our key contractor. They provide us with assistance with our IL program and they help us to make sure our young people in foster care are actually 
taking the Casey Life Skills Assessment, completing the Transitional Living Plans, they're completing um, NIDID, they're connected to other young people in foster care, that um, we are identifying permanency plans for our youth. So all those key critical areas that we need to talk about with our young people, Project Life is our lifeline um, for that. And we um, have really um, strengthened that partnership and we look forward to continuously working with them. Their website is attached here, the vaprojectlife.org. So three tips for our educators. Um, one, to help us strengthen the partnerships um, with the local um, agencies, um, the DSS agencies in their region. Um, this is very important. Um, our schools and our DSS agencies have these youth in foster care. We need to make sure our young people who are in the schools um, that are in foster care, that the school division staff are aware of them that they know what some of their challenges are, that they know what their strengths are, so we can better, um, you know, come together and help young people map out a plan for adulthood. If we're not connected, if we're not communicating, then, you know, the young person is the one that's not going to get the help and the supports that they need. So we really want to make sure those partnerships are strong at all times. Communicate with the LDSS agency, the custody of the youth, and about educational services available to the youth at school. Oftentimes, we may have some family services specialists um, that may not be aware of all the services that our school divisions um, offer young people with disabilities or those that are in foster care. So um, if the school staff can kind of embrace um, these professionals and help educate them when you see them kind of struggling and not quite aware of maybe what an IEP is. I remember as a social worker going to my first IEP meeting, I walked out of there very much confused. I, If I didn't have a lawyer that I could call to really explain to me all the things that was discussed in that meeting, I would have been totally lost. And you can't really help the student if you, as the professional, don't quite know what's going on. And so it takes some of our family services specialists a few times to go to an IEP meeting to quite get the grasp and understand what transpires there, what all those acronyms mean, and um, how to best help and support that young person. So if we can be aware of what information need to be passed down. If the social worker has the right information, then they can also pass that information down to the child's family members, to their parents, and also the caretakers of the young person as far as the needs that that young person has. And sharing information about community resources um, with the youth's worker as well as the caretaker. Oftentimes, we have um, resource families, which we call our foster families. They may not know about all the services they can access for youth that may have disabilities in the community. So if we can help them better take care of the young person by connecting them with resources and programs and services that's going to help them be a better parent for that young person, that is really awesome. That's what we try to do when we find our information that's accessible in the community. We do try to pass that on, and we just um, want to make sure that the other community people and school divisions are helping us um, stay informed with what they're offering and providing. Our VDSS IL team consists of um, three major persons. Um, our supervisor is Ms. Letha Moore Jones. I myself is the IL program specialist. And we also have Ms. Claudette Blue, who is our education specialist. Um, young people in foster care 
um, can go to college. They can apply for the FAFSA. Um, they can receive federal funding, and they can also receive what we call the educational training voucher to help them with educational resources while they are in college. So Ms. Claudette Blue helps us and make sure our young people that have disabilities that are in college are receiving the services and the supports that they need to successfully complete college. So this is our IL team. Feel free to reach out to us um, at any time. We are here to assist you in any way that we can. Thank you.